Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I make use of as a data scientist and also artificial intelligence and software development in general. These are just some of the tools that I particularly like. I will be showing you this on a Macintosh, but most of these tools are available on Windows, Mac, and Unix together. I really don't have a strong preference to one of these. I am frequently using Mac, Windows, and Linux almost interchangeably in my day-to-day -day life. I'm going to start with development IDEs and languages. First of all, an uh, application that I really like is VS Code. This is a Microsoft application, and it a close second to this, for me anyway, would be Atom. I started out with Atom, but I've since started to use VS Code as my IDE to rule all IDEs. So I use this for a variety of languages. I use this for Python, I use this for Java, I use it for JavaScript, Node.js. I don't use it a lot for R yet. I still really like R Studio for R, but I have gotten R programs up and running in this. The idea of something like VS Code is really that it's a universal editor. So it's a lot more lightweight than some of the IDEs like Visual Studio, which is just gigantic. This is really pretty quick to use and this way you only have to learn one IDE and you can do a variety of languages. Here I have Python loaded in it and this is this is actually Merge Life, which is a cellular automation that I that I develop. If I am going to do the IDE thing, then I will usually use something like a PyCharm for Python or IntelliJ for Java. And of course, you can't beat RStudio for R. That is currently my ID of choice for the R programming language. Of course, if you're going to use Python, you definitely want to take a look at Jupyter Notebooks. I use these all the time. You can use a Jupyter Notebook. It runs from your browser, and you can essentially open up notebooks that have a that can run Python code. What's great about this is when you run one particular cell, you're able to continue to have the, the data loaded. So this is just a quick notebook that I had been working on for one particular Python application. For communication tools, absolutely love Slack. It's great for staying connected with people uh, that, that I work with on my day job as well as students and other people as well. I also make use of Skype for more voice and video related activities. Another application is Zoom that I use for my, my class that I teach at Washington University where we have virtual class meetings at times. For general command line utilities, if you're on a Mac, you definitely want to make use of something called Brew. It's a package manager, so you can basically do Brew install and install a variety of Unix command line utilities that otherwise would be difficult to install. This is similar to things like yum and apt-get on other flavors of, of Unix. Of course, get, uh, probably one of the most useful tools for source control. I use get along with GitHub to push all sorts of code onto my GitHub repository where you can see it. And of course, Docker, which is right now bugging me to install an update. Probably my only complaint with Docker is it does do a lot of pop-ups. It tends to always ask me how much I like it. It's a little insecure, I think, at times. But other than that, it's a great application, and I use it for virtualization. I also have a Docker hub that has some of the Docker images that I've, that I've created. If I need full-on virtualization, I'll use VirtualBox by Oracle, which is a free virtual machine creator. So I can run that on Mac if I need a Windows machine. For graphics, there's a variety of programs that I use. I'm definitely not a graphic artist, but I do need to do image manipulation. If I'm dealing with raster images like PNGs or JPEGs, I use something called GIMP, which is a lot like Photoshop. This is what I make all my YouTube thumbnails with, and it has layers, so you can do some of the Photoshop-type things that, that I used to pay for a monthly subscription to use from Adobe. If you're dealing in vector art, then I recommend something called Inkscape. This can create SVG files and read SVG files. In fact, that's almost the native format for for this application. If you're not dealing with rasters where it's PNGs or JPEGs, this is a great tool to use. If you're doing more diagramming like, like Visio, you might want to look at something called DIA. 
I've used that some as well, although I try mostly now to use Inkscape. Another tool that I like is a static generator called Hexo. If you've used my website, heatandresearch.com, then you've seen Hexo in action. This basically allows me to generate fairly complicated website scripts that are quite static, so I don't have to pay for a virtual machine, which I don't mind too much doing, but if you have a virtual machine running your WordPress or similar website, you have to stay on top of the security patches. Otherwise, bad people will hack into your system and turn it into spam spewers, or much, much worse. I simply use a GitHub static repository, and I use Hexo to generate the content, and I'm able to essentially work with it completely statically. So if I run Hexo serve, I can see my website locally. And here we see heatandresearch.com, but you can see it's running from localhost. Another nice thing about Hexo is it's written in Node.js. I used to use something called Jekyll before that. Jekyll is based on Ruby, and I just do not use Ruby anymore for anything. So not having to deal with Ruby as well as Node.js is a good thing, for me anyway. Latex is a way that you can create documents that are largely designed for either print publication or uh, perhaps a PowerPoint type thing called Beamer, which is pretty cool if you want to use mathematically oriented uh, markup. So this is LaTeX. LaTeX is a way that you can represent text and equations. If you've ever used Wikipedia, all of the equations in Wikipedia are represented in LaTeX form, so you can just copy a, an equation right out of Wikipedia and put it into your LaTeX document. So this is the academic paper that I wrote for Merge Life, and if you do academic type publishing, you'll almost certainly run into LaTeX at some point, because some of the conferences and journals require a submission to actually be in this format. Here I'm using TextWorks, which is sort of an IDE for LaTeX, although more and more I am finding that I'm able to do this completely in VS Code. I'm really trying to move towards using VS Code for everything that it supports, which is a lot of things. When I'm on the Mac, I use CyberDuck quite a bit. It allows me to exchange files with SFTP. If you're using Windows, I use WinSCP all the time. I also use PuTTY a lot on Windows to be able to connect to Unix-based sites or onto Amazon EC2 instances that I, that I bring up. And of course, if you're using a Mac, then Remote Desktop is very useful to connect into Windows systems. Often I use this over a virtual machine. I'll just connect to a remote Windows box that I have access to, or I'll spin up an EC2 instance on Amazon to make use of when I need Windows. Well, there you have it, some of the tools that make my life easier on a day-to-day -day basis. I realize people have their own opinions on software. If you'd like to let me know about differences that you've seen or other applications that you think I might find useful, definitely drop me a note in the comments section. Thank you for watching this video, and if you found this informative and useful, please share it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.